What's up, you guys? Sean Ross at Managing Editor, FightfulWrestling.com. Here with a day two wrap-up of Mania events. I'm doing these for uh, non-WWE stuff, not the Ring of Honor New Japan stuff. It, it's for things outside of that and uh, things that I've heard maybe from these shows. Some some insight I can give you, all that stuff, and, and some of the highlights. I'm not covering every single thing on all these shows, but... Uh, if you guys want to support FightfulWrestling.com even more directly than you already do, besides the thumbs up, besides the subscriptions, the iTunes reviews, FightfulSelect.com is the way to do that. Uh, we got, we're got we bringing you more stuff on there than probably any wrestling uh, Patreon out there. Give it a glance. But hey, FightfulWrestling.com is where to be this weekend. Uh, Andrew Thompson, Jeremy Lambert helping me out a lot. Uh, I will release this on iTunes and all those audio platforms as well, but it'll be an edited version with all three days that, I, that I'm covering. But let's go ahead and get into it. There was some real good stuff yesterday. Penis party. <laughs> so that was some insane competition. Joey Ryan told me that they didn't expect to go up against NXT, and he was a little bummed they had to go up against Joey or Joey Janela, but was uh, it still ended up being an interesting show? Tracy Smothers wrestled on the show against Sue Young. Man, Tracy Smothers looks old as hell. Uh, I was happy to see Thunder Rosa on the show. I think the world of Thunder Rosa. Uh, they they ran that match where it's like okay, her and Holiday against Rosemary and Allie, and you know I don't maybe get the hype behind Rosemary and Allie as much, but Thunder Rosa I really enjoy. Uh, she is. Wonderful. Ultimo Dragon on that show. That was uh, a nice one. DJ Z on Penis Party, but you also had Taya Valkyrie and Johnny Penis defeating Pentagon and Phoenix. Oh boy. Uh, Jerry Lynn as a special guest referee. Uh, a blow up doll won the heavy metal weight. He yeah, the Iron Man heavy metal weight championship, the DDT title. Uh, one of the coolest spots, I thought, the funniest spots with this was uh, Session Moth Martina. Boy, she she's seeing her profile increase and increase and increase, and I like that. But it was her, Priscilla Kelly, and Scarlett Bordeaux. They defeated Joey Ryan, Val Venus, and Sexy Eddie. Session Moth Martina grabbed Val Venus's junk and then was like, whoa. Looked in there, saw what he had, and then dragged him to the backstage area. That was fun. Uh, the penis party show. I mean, my God, this WrestleMania weekend is the big shows headlining. I, I think Thursday's biggest show is Bloodsport. Friday's is NXT. Saturday's is R one ROH G1 Supercard, and then Sunday WrestleMania. But if you're into comedy wrestling, no shortage. Al almost too much in my estimation. Uh, the thing that ended up getting out there the most from penis party was the ass smashing into each other. And you know, I'm not sure the context. I didn't see the match, but I thought that the video was hilarious. <laughs> like, I don't care what context that was. That was funny. <laughs> Just the fact that a situation like that could exist in wrestling. Oh man. I thought that was very funny. <clears throat> MLW Battle Riot 2. You have the Lucha Brothers winning a match against Airwolf and, and Ray Horace. Airwolf is a name that I expect to see blow up soon. Uh, the National Championship semifinals. Pillman defeated Rich Swan. Hammerstone defeated Gringo Loco. And then the middleweight title match. Teddy Hart defeated Ace Austin. Ace Austin getting some love this weekend as well. The heavyweight title match. Uh, the street fight, uh, Tom Lawler defeated Jimmy Havoc. Uh, L.A. Park won Battle Riot 2. He eliminated Sammy Callahan to emerge victorious in that one. Stardom had some issues, man. Started um, really late, from what I understand. The the like a lot of the the branding didn't get switched over and all that. But um, yet Hazuki beating Dust. Dust get, had quite a few matches this weekend as well. Uh, Watanabe uh, retained the world of one or the wonder of uh, Stardom Championship, and not not as many matches as a lot of people expected to see here. I mean, with Session Moth Martina in action again. That's cool. Uh, I, I liked seeing Britt Baker on this show be a Priestley, who we interviewed. Jamie Hader, who we interviewed. We have the uh, full results up there, but Oedo Tai. 
didn't pick up the win. And I mean, I get it. Probably want to end happy on on your first show in NYC and all that. But uh, from uh, all th- everything that I saw, a pretty good five match show for Stardom. I hope they they're able to come over to the states a little more often. And um, I, I would imagine next year it being in Tampa, so close to Orlando, where so many independent wrestlers live. I think they they I don't see why they wouldn't be able to. <clears throat> Black Label Pro. I heard Jonathan Gresham, as I posted on Select, just barely made it there in time for the show. Orange Cassidy defeated Brian Alvarez. <laughs> I haven't been able to see that match yet, but I, I want to see it. Nick Gage against Hornswoggle. It's good to see Hornswoggle, man. He did not th- like the number of bookings that he got last year, and he wanted to change that, and he went with the attraction route. He knew what he had to do to get those. There was the WWN Super Show, Mercury Rising results. Again, all these are over at FightfulWrestling.com under our uh, results tab. J.D. Drake beat Higuchi to retain the WWN title. The Shine title was on the line as well. Uh, Allison K came up short, lost her Shine title to Yamashita. Um, yeah, there, there wasn't a lot that stood out to me on that. I didn't get to take in all of that show. Shimmer. Boy, I, I liked a lot on that show. The there, Chris Wolf, man, a ball of energy. Um, that is, it was good to see her. You can, she's living a, a really good life in New York right now. Uh, got a great reaction, just really, really good. There were some aspects of this. There was one person in particular in the match who wrestled like Orange Cats Cassidy and not intentionally. But then on the other side of things, like I, I, so many people in that eight woman tag were good. I thought Solo Darling had a great showing this weekend. Uh, between this and I think it was today's Orange Cassidy show, man, she's a fun one to watch. Uh, more fun ones to watch. <clears throat> Tessa Blanchard beating Britt Baker. I appreciate Tessa Blanchard. What I appreciate about Tessa Blanchard is that every single time she's in the ring, she looks like she cares and she looks like she wants to win. No matter what, whether it's Joey Ryan or Britt Baker, she's in the ring with. Tessa Blanchard, the character, wants to beat you up and wants to win. More importantly, what she doesn't want to do is lose. That That's, that's the vibe that I get, is that Tessa Blanchard at all costs, just will not lose if she can help it. I appreciate that. That is damn good pro wrestling. She is among the best women's performers, period, right now. Period. I would love to see her mixing it up with a lot of WWE women, but Impact has a hell of a women's division as well. High End won the uh, Shimmer Scramble. Nicole Savoy uh, retained the Shimmer Championship. Uh, Heart of Shimmer Championship. Samantha Heights defeated Dust to win the title. Uh, Dust got some bookings, but uh, didn't didn't win many of them. Rev Pro. Tomohiro Ishii defeated David Starr. David Starr getting his name out there, man. Uh, Suzuki Goon, Suzuki, and Zack Sabre defeating Hiroshi Tanahashi and Will Ospreay. I mean, this was special for them. You, you go to a lot of these WWN shows and a lot of the WrestleCon shows, and you're going to see a lot of the same people. You're not going to see a lot of these New Japan guys anywhere but Rev Pro. So uh, that, that can be appreciated. Rapongi 3K was there. Again, like I said, Ishii, Rocky Romero, and Taguchi. Jonathan Gresham in action. action. Big weekend for Jonathan Gresham. <clears throat> really good stuff. Uh, had a lot of reports from WrestleCon. I heard Enzo Amore had a really long line. Now, I know I poked fun at him about the, the Wale Mania thing and how many people left. I heard he had a really, really long line at WrestleCon. I heard Rob Van Dam did too. And I heard a lot of positive interactions with Enzo Amore. And hey, good for him. If he can go out there and make money and and have positive interactions with people who like him, good, man. Good for him. Make that money. WrestleCon US versus the world. The Hart Foundation defeated LAX. That is such a cool match. MLW versus Impact Wrestling. David Starr defeated Daga. Puma King defeated Sammy Guevara. MJF defeated Ethan Page. This was a fun, quick match. Really, really good. Um, MJF 
<clears throat> Another one having a weekend, man. Brian Cage defeated Masato Tanaka. Glad to see Masato Tanaka in New York and working. And apparently he vanity searches himself because <laughs> he thanks me for complimenting him. Brian Pillman Jr. picks up a win. Uh, Black Taurus defeated the new free agent Darby Allen. <clears throat> Eichmann over Rich Swan. You had the Rascals defeating Adam Brooks, Australian Suicide, and Robbie Eagles. WrestleCon did some really good stuff. I thought that they had uh, a couple of awesome shows, but guys, it ain't always good. Who boy. I don't know what Black Craft Cult did this week. Holy crap, man. That show was miserable. So I heard there were issues with hot mics and all that. I tuned out early on when I'm seeing chair shots of the head. I love the chains as ropes. That was neat. This show was a mess. As Sean Waltman would say, this show was an abortion. It was, it was miserable. It was really, really bad. I feel bad for anybody who sat through this whole thing. My condolences to my good friend Trina, who I saw was there. I'm sorry, Trina. I'm sorry you had to experience that. I'm sorry you had to live that. You deserve better than that. Whew. I imagine, uh, this is my speculation, that th these types of shows are a loss leader for their t-shirt company. Woof, man. I feel bad that David Tease had to cover this horse shit. Not good. Not good. And they had great names on this show. David Starr on this show. Uh, Soraya Knight was on this show. Gangrel. Pepper Parks. Uh, OVE. Luchasaurus. Teddy Hart. Matt Cross. Mecha Wolf. Ray Phoenix. But yeah, Simon Grimm beating Pentagon in under five minutes. Huh? What? They got Masato Tanaka and Chris Dickinson on this show. Mm. Not good. Not good. And commentary sucked. Sucked. Uh, I'll tell you whose commentary did not suck. Sarah Shockey. Uh, so I, I didn't know a lot about Sarah. I know that she does the um, Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling podcast, but I heard her voice, and originally I thought it was Veda Scott because it, very similar voices. That woman is a fantastic color commentator. Unbelievable color commentator. And I wasn't as hard on uh, some of her, her partners as, as other people were. But man, Sarah's real damn good. I just heard her and she was entertaining and informative and funny and good. And I was just like, man, I, I like listening to this woman talk pro wrestling. I, I like listening to her call wrestling and, and just really, really good. I can't understate how important that is. And, and there are a few good voices. Tyler Valls is, is a guy who I think should be calling more wrestling. I don't know why the hell he wasn't brought to New York. But... um. I heard that and I was blown away by her by her commentary. I thought it was really, really good. Uh, and when you've got things like are on some of these shows, like the Orange Cassidy show, and I'll rave about her some more tomorrow, but you've got a mix of really, really serious wrestling and, quite frankly, stuff that has not a lot to do with pro wrestling as many know it. And to be able to have that range not just as a promoter, not just as a performer, not just as a wrestler, but to be able to do all of those things uh, from, from a commentary aspect, that is not always easy to do, and she made it seem really easy. So when I talk about big weekends and people who made a big impression, it's not just limited to the ring. It's not just limited to uh, those type of, those type of uh, athletic performances. I think that that her stock just increased a ton. It was my first exposure to really get to hear some of her commentary, and boy, that was a joy. That was really, really good. Chikara show. It was a Chikara show. That's what I'll say. If, if you like Chikara, this is a show for you. If, if you're not a big Chikara guy, and I'm, I'm not a big Chikara guy, a Kid and Air Wolf, those are two names to, to look out for. I thought it was hilarious that Chuck Taylor performed as Stokely Hathaway after Stokely Hathaway had performed as Chuck Taylor in the past. That was good stuff. That was good stuff. Let's talk about Joey Janela's spring break. 
Nick Gage defeated Otani to retain the title. Otani, man. It feels like I've said this six, seven times. Having a weekend. Having a weekend. Now, NXT had an incredible amount of buzz last night. We did a full podcast on that. Check it out. Joey Ryan's show got, did what it was supposed to do. It got a few clips out there and got some attention and it was grabbing dicks and smashing asses and all that stuff. But I mean, between all this stuff, between Orange Cassidy having a show and Joey Ryan having a show and there's Kaiju Big Battle and there's uh, Chikara even. It's like, what can what can Joey Janela do that's different? Well, him and Marco Stunt, thank God Marco Stunt's back. Glad to see it. They go out and they have an awesome match. They just have an incredible match. And uh, Joey Janela's just really good at all this stuff, man. At promoting, at wrestling, at playing a character that is not really that different. It is truly the extension of himself based on what I've experienced. I mean, my God, I called the man up for an interview a few weeks ago. And he's like, hey, can, can you wait until 1245 a.m. Eastern? I'm cooking pasta right now. I'm like, all right. And I call him up. And I'm like, you good to, good to go? Hell yeah. I'm like, All right, man. He's a great interview. He's a hell of a promoter. He is fantastic at social media. And he is a goddamn good wrestler. And what he's able to do for the careers of people like Marco Stunt is outstanding. That happened again. It's a guy, apparently, we're going to call him no legs based on our results. Tony Deppin's out there and brings a guy out that doesn't have legs out from the crowd. Old no legs whips ass, man. Guy without legs. A guy with no legs had a breakout performance on this show and is going to get a lot of bookings. Now, I don't know if this is the person that Joey Janela was referring to when I talked to him when he said, yeah, I think we're going to have another person that's like PCO, that's like Marco Stunt. Because a lot of you all might forget, man, PCO really got his profile increased last year, WrestleMania weekend at spring break against Walter, of all people. Look at where they are a year later. Look at where they are a year later. Now, I'm not crediting Joey Janela with the, the ascent of Walter. He was getting there anyway. But he had a hell of a lot to do with PCO. How about Marco Stunt, lost in New York? Now, I, I know he did the SCI stuff and really uh, turned a lot of heads there. But from a national exposure standpoint, those Joey Janela shows is, are very important. And this fella that Joey Janela, quite frankly, took a chance on. Although it's very clear that he is qualified as a performer and an in-ring guy. Joey Janela did take a... Not everybody wants to do that. Not everybody feels the same way as Joey Janela about taking this kind of gamble. This was awesome. This was so cool. Jungle Boy got a great ovation. That was good to see after what has happened to his father. Taka Michinoku defeated Orange Cassidy. Of course, that's fun. Come on. Come on. Takata defeated Jimmy Lloyd. You have Ethan Page's soul on the line against Starman. If you don't know who Starman is, Starman is a character from an old pro wrestling game called Pro Wrestling. Pink, The pink jumpsuit with the star face. Well, immediately, Ethan Page gets rolled up and pinned. Ethan Page loses his soul. Starman unmasked. Now, by the way, if I said Joey Ryan a bunch during this Joey Janela show, I meant Joey Janela. Sorry, both of them took chances, though. Starman unmasks. And who is it? Virgil. Fantastic. What a turn. Last but not least, the Invisible Man versus the Invisible Stan. I assume his evil twin brother. This was awesome. This was, <laughs> and, I, and I'll go into more detail about it tomorrow, but this was just uh, about what pro wrestling is, and I love the speech that Teddy Hart gave about that. This was a referee job. 
and the, re- the name of the referee escapes me, but it's the GCW ref. And he had to put on bad boy vision goggles to see these guys. And they, <laughs> they, it was a ref job, basically. The ref counting the, the falls and all that. And they had people look up at the rafters and take a spill when the invisible man jumped off. Come on, man. And the crowd was there for it all the way. How can you not have fun doing stuff like this? How can you go to a show like this and not just have the time of your life? There were three fun-ass shows going on at the same time and all did great attendance. And I used to be the type of person who didn't really care that much about the WrestleMania weekend stuff. Like last year, I was like, yeah, all right, I'll tune into, or a couple of years ago, it's like, oh, I'll tune into the Janela stuff, sure. Every year, I'm going to look forward to Bloodsport. Every year, I'm going to look forward to the WrestleCon Super Show now. Every year, I'm looking forward to Spring Break. Assuming Penis Party goes on, I'll look forward to that. I got to give Game Changer Wrestling a ton of credit. Their presentation, phenomenal this weekend. Blue Impact Wrestling out of the water. Out of the water. There is so much fun wrestling. Now, I'm not going to say there's so much like unbelievable, top of the line, in ring wrestling. You're you're primarily getting that out of the out of the NXT, out of the Ring of Honor, New Japan, and out of WWE this weekend. But there's some entertaining stuff out there, and that's what I love about pro wrestling, man. Let it be a little bit of everything. Thank you, guys. Uh, Bryce Rimsburg is the ref. Says Vape Ross Vape. Thank you, talented man, very talented man. Uh, that. Unsung hero of, of this weekend. He's a guy that might not get the, the type of attention that he deserves, and he deserves it after after that match. Outstanding. Leave me a thumbs up, guys. Subscribe. Thank you all so much. Until next time. <laughs>